how to use Trello to crush productivity. Let's face it, when it comes to scaling any business, if you want to become more productive, the answer is really in systems and processes and building up checklists so that the things that you do over and over again is put into something that is systematic and streamlined to give you your sanity back. And today in this video, I'm gonna be taking you behind the scenes to how I create these different checklists and processes social media specifically to the example that I used was a new process that I put in place for TikTok ads. That's correct. And understand something, this could be applied to anything. It could be for building funnels, it could be doing up a sales process, it could be booking hotels, venues, anything in your business. You and me, we could be in a different market altogether, but ultimately, if you understand how to put processes and systems into place, that is the one thing that is going to set you free. With that said, let's begin. Systems will set me free. Now, why are systems important? Here's why. Because it doesn't matter whether we are in different market or niche or industry. How many of you here, there are things that you do in your business that repeats itself once a while? So the question is, how do we put that into a process or a system or a checklist so that one of these two things happen? Okay, number one, Either it gives our self clarity on what are the steps so that we can eventually let go of the steps. So for those of you solopreneurs, even though you might not have a team just yet, this is great to give yourself clarity towards what does the whole thing look like so that you'll be able to either do it yourself in a more effective and efficient way or eventually let go by assigning people to do those tasks. Now, number two, it is so that it gives somebody else in your team, your organization, freelancer, clarity on what are the little steps that is required in order to make that big step happen. So that's the second reason for this and why you want to put things into a process. Because the role of a leader is to create more leaders. And you can't lead somebody else with a brief that says, please check and make sure it's done. So the first tier of growth is to teach and enable your first tier of members by showing them how to do things by putting the systems in place for them. Now, eventually, when you continue scaling and you have two tiers of leadership, that is when your team members could be creating systems for other people in the organizations. How many of you here either use Trello or you know what Trello is. Okay, so most of you have. Um, if you've not, it doesn't matter. It's just a free platform that you can utilize. So I'm gonna go and log into my Trello. So you'll notice that I've got all these boards, right? Now, what are these boards? These boards are just, again, either platforms or products or funnels or departments within my organization. Okay, so for example, I've got like the One Good Pitch webinar funnel, platform closing, proven presentations, social media, content board. I'll talk about what templates and checklists are, testimonials, right? TikTok. So I've got all these different boards um, for different departments. For the purpose of this, all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to create a uh, new board for my team. So I'm going to call this TikTok and I'm going to put this as a demo so that it doesn't conclude your team. And I'm going to create this board. And as you can see, it's, it's empty. Okay, and I want to be able to share with you how to start creating processes. Now, the first thing that I would normally have within that, that, that board is I would start creating processes within that thing. Because everything, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Instagram, whether it's sending out emails, chances are there's going to be activities within that department or within that funnel that is going to be repeated over time. So your role if you wanna start thinking about scaling or even at least give you back your time, your sanity, and give you that insight and vision so that when you do it again, it's easier for you, or when you're briefing somebody from a team in terms of what the steps are, it becomes a whole lot easier. So all I'm going to do when I start creating this new board, if I were to start all over again, if I don't have team members, um, and if I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about hiring my first person, okay, this is what I'll be doing. So. I always think about like first, 
what is the process, okay? So for example, this process that I'm showing you guys right now is basically converting, right, a TikTok video to an ad. That's the process, okay? Now converting a TikTok video to ad might have five, seven, eight steps. So all we're going to be doing now is I'm gonna create this card. And once I create the card, now the card title, it must be self-explanatory. Without clicking on the card, a person must know what it does, okay? So for example, this process would be converting TikTok to ads. Now, what you need to be doing is then you need to create a checklist, okay? So like, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to create a checklist and this checklist over here is on that process. So I want to think about like what that process is once that TikTok video is done. So step number one is probably to download TikTok video, which acts as the hook. So now somebody knows, oh, okay, step number one, I need to download the TikTok video. And by the way, as I'm developing this process, this literally is the process that, that you guys should be thinking about in your organization that could be different to this, okay? But I'm here to equip you with a skill set so that you can start creating processes for yourself. Now, once I download this video, or once somebody else from the team download that video, what needs to happen? The next thing that needs to happen is there needs to be the story, okay? I need to shoot somebody, which is now me, right? Shoot video for the story and offer, right? So once that TikTok video is done, I need to con continue that conversation with the story and the offer. After that video is shot, that is when somebody probably has to stitch the videos, right? Or merge or combine the videos and edit. After it's being stitched, I probably want it uploaded somewhere. And I'm very specific, right? I will say upload to Vimeo. And I'll even tell them the format to upload it in. So it would be like, for example, I will call it add dash funnel close title so it would be example add content multiplier formula life of a content creator so that is when it's people are starting to see like the process so chances are this person that's doing it is probably somebody that's related to video editing so notice what's happening right now it's like this is the full process of converting TikTok videos to ad. Okay, so now we gotta think about whether this makes sense. When a video is done, when it's on TikTok, what is my team doing? They download the video. After that, they shoot. So this is would be me shooting the video, stitching the videos together and editing them, adding it on Vimeo and calling it with this naming convention. Then somebody has to write up the ad based on what is said on video, schedule the post on Facebook, run the ad, take ad ID. Now, this could even be the case where if it's repurposing TikTok videos, description could even be, this is the entire process from shooting TikTok videos all the way to having it on all platforms. Let's talk about implementation, okay? In the typical board, the workflow is usually not started and then in progress and then for review, if needed, and then there is uh, completed, okay? What's gonna happen now is, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna move this here, and every single time there is a new either idea or instruction that is TikTok related, it's going to be created over here. Now this video over here is when a team member We'll go in here and because they are already briefed on the descriptions and this is where a team member now, or even myself, if I'm a solopreneur, I can literally click on this and I can just copy this, create a card. And now I'm going to put this card over here. I'm just going to call this card like that, okay? Now, what's gonna happen when you start doing this for everything in your organization? This is going to give you a bird's eye view of everything that is taking place in every single department, every single moving piece, right? Every single department in my business, I can literally in one click go in to see what's not started, what's being worked on, 
what requires somebody's attention and what's completed. So right now, let's say I wanted to assign somebody on this task. So for example, over here, if let's say the person that is going to be doing this is Adri, I'm just going to add him to this thing here. So notice now it says Adri. Now what does this mean? It means that Adri is going to be the person that is in charge of the execution and implementation of this task all the way until the end. Now it could be the case that different people, as you can see, are involved in different parts of the process. So let me walk you through how this might look like, okay? So let's say right now the video is done, okay? Um, Adri's downloaded the video, I've shot the video with him, and now he has stitched the videos together and he's uploaded on Vimeo. Now the next thing is somebody needs to write up the ad and it's not him, okay? So what can he do? Now he can add a team member onto this task or he can add somebody else, okay? So for example, um, he could add, let's say, Tanel in here. He's gonna remove himself from this card. That's one way. Now what does this mean? It means that the next person, which happens to be Tanel over here, is the person that is like passing the torch onto the next person. So when he starts, all he's gonna do is he's gonna move it to in progress, right? So now everybody in the team that's in this department, in this project, knows that somebody has started and right now it is waiting on Tanel. okay? How many of you are starting to see the power in getting clarity for yourself or the people in your organization? Set your team up for success. How do you set your team up for success? By creating these different processes. Well, I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes to this coaching call. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below what your biggest takeaway is. And as always, be sure to smash the like button. It does help the channel out a little bit and to subscribe to this channel if you want to be notified of future videos just like this one. Now, some of you asking me, how can I be part of this process? How can I ask you questions? How can I have you coach me or mentor me? Um, we want to make sure that we are working with the people that's the right fit. You'll need to fill up a form. There's a link right below this video. Somebody on my team might give you a call to interview you to see if they're right fit for each other. And if you want to apply and see if you're a good fit, then all you need to do is click on this link in the description box below and my team will be in touch with you.